Do you want to master the darkness? How about understand the basics of thermal? Let me help you understand why dual band systems are so useful at night. Here at Arcane, we talk a lot about helmet mounted dual band systems. We have spent hours speaking about specific units. We've gone deep into the weeds on specs. While these specs are important to consider, something we haven't done well has been talk about why running both spectrums, night vision and thermal are so important to combine together in the darkness. I spend a lot of time on the phone with customers helping them decide which device is going to work best for them. Often, I'm helping customers choose what device to buy first. And a lot of the time, they're trying to choose between thermal or night vision. A lot of what drives this could be budget. Some people don't have six plus thousand dollars to drop on both spectrums at one time. They need to be able to buy one device first and then the second later. One of the questions I get asked a lot while helping people choose between night vision or thermal is can I navigate with the thermal? While that seems like a very simple question to answer, it's not. Let's take some time to jump back into the basics of thermals and how they work in the darkness. What do I mean by the basics of thermal, you may ask? The basics to me are what you can expect to be able to do or not be able to do with the thermal device. Understanding when and why you can or can't do something is very important in the decision you're making as to whether you're going to buy night vision first or thermal first. Your ability to navigate in the darkness with a thermal is going to be directly linked to the clarity of the image from the thermal. Now, the clarity of the image from the thermal is going to be directly linked to weather conditions. That's why the answer isn't simple, because the weather, well, it's never just simple. There's a lot of talk about humidity in this industry and how it affects a thermal. While they're onto something, they're missing a big piece of the puzzle and some of the very critical details that will directly impact your thermal's clarity and image quality. The pitfall that seemingly everyone falls into in this industry is to only consider the current weather conditions and sometimes only one of those current weather conditions. While this is good practice, there's more to it than that. The three biggest weather factors that shift a thermal's clarity are sunshine, air temperature, and precipitation. And what those three did over the last six to 12 hours, not just what they are currently doing. Here's a couple different examples to help you all understand what I'm talking about. Let's say the sun was shining all day. At dusk, when the sun goes down, all the terrain starts to cool at different rates. The trees cooling at a different rate than the grass, cooling at a different rate than the pavement, will help give your thermal the data it needs to paint a clear image. Contrast in the surrounding terrain's temperatures is required for your thermal to paint that clear picture. Now let's flip that example around. Let's say it's been overcast and cloudy all day. The sun never shone that day before dusk. Sprinkle in a little bit of rain so all the terrain in your surroundings is wet and you now have the perfect conditions to create a blank screen in your thermal while you're scanning. At best, you will have an image that is lacking many details about the surrounding terrain that you would like to know. What's created this blank screen? Well, it's the lack of sunshine warming things up at different rates throughout the day. On top of that, everything's wet, and that water helps make everything the same temperature. This particular combination of weather conditions makes it extremely difficult for the thermal to paint a clear picture for you. In turn, navigating with your thermal in these conditions would prove to be extremely difficult. Here's where your PVS-14 comes in. If your thermal is not showing you a clear image, it's not the end of the world. As long as it's not too foggy, for your PVS-14 to see, because now you can heavily rely on the 14 to navigate and look at your surroundings. 
but don't throw your thermal out yet. Using your thermal strictly for scanning for warm bodies is still extremely effective. Whether that's alphabet boys or coyotes, either way, the thermal will still do its job looking for these warm bodies even in these dreary conditions. What I've found and what I continue to notice is in those dreary conditions, when the blank screen is not giving you the detail you want of the surroundings, you will still get that animal or that warm body to pop as an image in the thermal screen, even if it can't see the surroundings. Specifically understanding when and why you can do certain things and when and why you can't do certain things with your dual band system is very important. At least it's important to me. There are certain conditions where I choose to not leave the house to hunt predators, but don't let that last statement fool you. I've hunted in every condition and very often too, clearly, or I wouldn't have this data to present to you if I sat in the house all the time. To me, enjoying the hunt is directly linked to the clarity of the experience. If both my night vision and thermal are going to struggle that night to see maybe 100 yards, I'll usually always elect to stay home. Those nights are better spent with the family. If you found this information helpful, please subscribe to our channel. If you have more questions about what nighttime gear you should purchase, don't hesitate to reach out to me directly via email. It's cs at arcane.com. Or you can easily find my direct number on our website. Feel free to text or call me anytime. I'd love to speak to you directly about any of your night vision or thermal related questions. My goal is to always get you into the device that will serve you best based on your unique situation.